Hi, Stephanie with the Doc Squad sharing with you another great tutorial that you can use with Google. So here we have a Google Calendar and we're going to add in appointment slots. All you have to do is make sure you're open up to either week or day and go to your plus create. Now we're going to make our event. Now you're going to notice that if you're a G Suite user, you'll have appointment slots listed here. If you're not a G Suite user, you won't have this feature. So we're going to start by typing in a title. And in this case, it's virtual hours. And then we're going to click appointment slots. Once that's open, we're going to change the date to what makes sense for us. We're going to start this on July 20th, which is a Monday. And the time I will not be meeting with students in the evening. So I'm going to change that appointment time to, let's say, 8.45 a.m. Automatically, it defaults for an hour duration, but you can change that to make that um, half an hour or whatever fits your needs. Also, the slot duration, you could change this as well. And let's say maybe we're going to meet with students for 10 minutes at a time. So that's how long our slot will be. And that duration will be 10 slots per um, for that hour. And then we want to make sure that's falling in the right calendar. So I have multiple calendars. Of course, you have a calendar for each of your different Google Classrooms. So you want to make sure it's attached to your the correct calendar for you. And then I'm going to click one more thing, more options. This is kind of cool. You have the ability if you'd like to repeat. So let's say this is going to be a standing opportunity for you. So you can do this independently for one day. Meaning, let's say it's one day you're going to have parent teacher conferences on one day or you're going to have as administrator a data chat on one day or maybe your virtual hours are going to occur every single day during the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So all I clicked was customize and this custom reoccurrence popped up. Now you can also decide if this is going to happen in perpetuity, then you can leave it at the default, which is never um and then it will be all the time or you can click on on and you can tell that tell it that you're going to end it let's say your quarter ends october 9th so you have those changes or perhaps after you have a certain number of um days that this has happened and you want to stop after eight days like i'm done no more virtual hours right click done that was my time from all right. Okay. So once that's in, now you have an appointment page that is provided to you. This is a link. You also can do everything else that you would normally do with an event. Maybe you want to give the students directions. Perhaps you want to say, before we meet, please make sure that you have watched X, Y, Z video. Maybe you want to have a link back over to your uh, syllabus, right? So that you have some kind of like guiding practices for when they come and meet with you during virtual hours so that you're not looking at them and they're not just looking at you, but there are things that you guys are actively doing together. So once you have all those components set, you click save. By the way, notice that it said add guests. You have an opportunity to do that too. Why that's important is perhaps you are always working with a collaborative teacher. Perhaps you have a para or you have an ESC or um, ESOL teacher that works collaboratively with you and you want to meet together with that teacher and those students. You can add that guest in, that other co-teacher. Only activate that guest feature if you're going to always want them to be in your virtual hours because they will always be invited. Okay, so once your virtual hours are there, you can click on the virtual hours to go back and see that link. We'll click on it. So here's this calendar appointment page. So once it pops up, you'll notice there are no virtual spots. Why? Because we started on July 20th. So I'm going to go and navigate to that week of July 20th. And now you see all of your slots. This blue is letting you know that that duration of time of 845 to 945. And then the independent boxes are letting us know, well, here's a 10 minute slot from 845 to 855. Okay. Uh, so what is really cool about this is I can show you that let's say you want to tell a student, I'm booking you in for that slot. Like you already know, like say you have a parent and a, a student and you're doing virtual learning and you want to reserve that specific time and let that, that person know, you can kind of like do that on your own. Or maybe you are double booked and you have something else going on and you want to reserve that time. You have the opportunity to also book in your own calendar, okay? So let's say I'm a student 
and I've been given this link. I open it up and here are all of my opportunities. You know, you have 10 per day, you have five days a week, you have 50 times that you can meet independently with students individually or in small groups. This is how they book their appointment. And then again, remember we said you can add directions in and maybe you're letting the students know, okay, I want you to bring your X, Y, or Z. They can have that and they on their own can have a description. Maybe you're going to explain to them every time we meet, I want you to always, let's say, review first the test or the quiz, right? And maybe they're going to now tell you, I had a question about um, page 17 and I don't know how to. Right. That way you can be prepared for that meeting as well. So that's how you can do that. And if they decide to book this time, they click save. And your appointment has been saved. It will be in their calendar. And then on your end, this is now a slot that cannot be booked. So it's already there. You can go back and delete um, you or them if they choose to, because again, it'll be on a calendar. This is that page. So what you do is for the students, or for colleagues, you click on the link in any other way where you would share a link, you share this link. So how I would share a link, I would put this link, for example, at the end of a form. When the students submit a form, let's say you're giving a quiz, you could put this at the end as your closing message and let them know, great job on this quiz. If you have any questions, don't forget to come to my virtual hours. You can put this in your Google Classroom and this could be part of your standing materials list so they know. You can add this even into your syllabus. If you're using a Google Doc syllabus, you can do a hyperdoc, a hyperlink, and have this there. You can email this if, let's say, you're using some interface for your school. We use SIS in our district. You can send this out as a parent link or, or whatever way you would message your parents. So this is a way you can share with your students. Here's when we're able to meet, and this is how you would set up that calendar. Hope this helps. Stephanie you from the Doc Squad. Appreciate your time. If you are able to, please make sure that you go to our feedback form and let me know whether or not this tutorial helped you. Thanks.